Welcome to the Pro Tools 8 Kit, the complete professional workflow for music production brought to you by Focal Press and Pro Tools 101 authors Rob Shimansky and Chris Basile. In this module, the complete music production, we will go through the process of an entire session setup and export from hardware settings to the actual recording process and finalizing your finished product with Pro Tools 8 LE and the Apple OS X Leopard operating system. Now that we have gone through and described many of the features of Pro Tools 8 LE and their functions, let's try to put together a small recording using some of the elements we just learned. The first thing you need to do is click the Setup menu and choose Hardware from the drop-down menu. Here you will find your DigiDesign peripherals. Optical format, either ADAT or SPDIF, the clock source, and the sample rate you will be recording at. You can now close the hardware dialog box, click Setup, and choose Playback Engine from the drop down menu. Here you can see the hardware buffer size and or set it. If you are recording, set it lower. If editing or mixing, set it higher such as 1024. The next drop down menu, you can dedicate the number of processes used solely for real time processing. Next, you can adjust CP usage percentage as well as playback buffer and cache sizes. These settings will be determined by the individual abilities of your system. You should also take the time to go through the preferences settings of Pro Tools 8 LE. You are now ready to create a new session and get started. Click on the File menu and select New Session from the drop-down menu. In the New Session dialog box, you will be able to select your audio file type, bit depth, sample rate, and input-output settings. You can also choose to use a blank session, or choose from a collection of predefined session templates, such as podcasting as an example. When selecting bit depth, choose 16 when recording a CD-ROM to conserve resources. Choose 24-bit when recording a DVD-ROM or a higher format. Now, you can name your session and choose a hard drive on which to save it. DigiDesign recommends that you use an external hard drive and using FireWire will give you the fastest transfer speed option currently available. It's time to create the type and number of tracks you will need to work with within your new session. Click on the track menu and then new from the drop down menu. Here, in the new track dialog box, you can create many new tracks simultaneously. You will also find many settings available to you, such as making the track mono or stereo, which type of track you will use, such as audio, instrument, MIDI, auxiliary input, or master fader. And once you have made your selection, click Create. After you create your new tracks, they will be visible in the Edit and Mix windows. Now you can name your tracks, as well as customize them to your individual needs. You can also type in individual reference notes in the space provided. Staying organized is a critical part of a good production workflow. You will need to make an input selection for each track you use to record with. To do this, you can use the Audio Input Path selector and choose an input source from the drop-down menu. For an auxiliary input, you may want to select a bus input from where you will be sending a signal from the recorded source later on in the session. You can repeat this process for as many tracks as you will record with simultaneously. If you are recording with a click track, there are a few simple steps you can use to create one. You can use the click track option predefined template 
or let's use an open auxiliary import we made early in the session setup. Next, click on an available insert. Then choose Plugin, Instrument, and finally click from the drop down menus. The Digirack Click dialog box will appear. Here you can make adjustments or use built in presets as your click source. Once you make your selection, you will see click in the auxiliary input insert box and now every time you hit play on the transport the metronome click will follow. There are many options when recording guitars. You can mic a cabinet, go direct, or a whole host of other options. For this tutorial we will be using a guitar plugin for the session. IK Multimedia offers one of the leading software plugins for recording guitars or bass on the market today. Plugins offer ease and flexibility when recording on a budget or in less than ideal recording conditions. You can now arm your track by clicking the record button on the track itself. It will flash red indicating that it is record ready. Over in the transport area of the edit window, you can adjust the mode for playback and recording. There is loop, destructive, non-destructive, and punch mode. All have indicators letting you know your current recording or playback mode. The click track is now in place and we have chosen our guitar plugin. Now you can begin to record your music. The guitar track needs to be armed to record then click record in the transport area it will begin to flash and by now selecting the play button you can now begin recording now you monitor your levels and you will notice recorded audio in waveform in the edit window let's try adding some keyboard go to an open insert space and click plugin instrument and select DB33. The DB33 is a great vintage style keyboard you can use to add some layers to your production. After choosing a preset sound setting that you like, arm the keyboard track and click the record button on the transport so it flashes. When you are ready, click the play button and begin to record. Notice the difference of how the recorded MIDI track looks in compared to the guitar's waveform. That is because it is recording in ticks, not samples. So far we have done all our work in the edit window. Let's take a look at the mix window so we can add some reverb to the guitar using an auxiliary input track. Click on an open send for the guitar track and select bus 1 mono from the bus drop down menu. The guitar bus fader will appear. Here, you can set the level sent to the auxiliary track that we selected bus 1 as the input to earlier in this session. Click an available insert tab for your orgs track. Select plugin, reverb, then deverb from the drop downs. The deverb dialog box will then appear. Here, you can make any necessary adjustments to the reverb you need. Once you select the type of effect to use, you need to set the level. Click the play button in the transport and adjust the signal as you feel needed. You are almost ready to make that first CD. One of the last things we'll do in this session is to add compression to the master fader to keep things consistent. Waves plugins are a standard selection among many engineers today. The SSL line is only one example of many. With phenomenal presets and accurate signal processing, it's no wonder they are an industry favorite. Now it's time to bounce your session down to a format such as WAVE or MP3. 
Click the File menu, select Bounce To, then click Disk. The Bounce dialog box will appear where you can choose which format you wish to bounce to, such as mono sum, bit depth, such as 16 bit to CDs, and 24 bit to DVDs, and sample rate which is commonly 44.1 kilohertz, as an example. Click Bounce after making your selections to invoke the Save dialog box. Name your file and click Save. 